<sighs> All right. I said I wasn't gonna do it in the last video I made about the small form factor Optiplex, but because so many of you have asked me about case swapping it so many times, I decided to give in and give the people what they want. Okay, ever since I started swapping the Dell Optiplex mini towers and releasing content on it on my channel, there's always been a ton of comments saying, what about the small form factor Optiplex? Can you show us how to case swap that? Well, to be honest, I've avoided trying to case swap the small form factor version of the Optiplex like the Plague because it's not at all as easy as the mini towers that I've done before and there are a ton of small compromises you have to make to get everything to work properly and there's a ton of stuff you have to transfer and it's just a mess. But I think I may have found a better solution and I'll show you guys right after a word from our sponsor. Are you tired of that annoying Windows activation watermark on your desktop? VIP URCD key has you covered with fully licensed codes to activate your favorite games and software. Purchasing your key is super easy. All you have to do is click on the item that you want, click buy to add it to your cart. Once in your cart, you can now enter my promo code RAV20. After adding the promo code, you'll see your savings pop up and you can then purchase your product with your chosen payment method. Finding and entering your Windows 10 CD key is super easy. All you have to do is go over to your user profile, find your purchase and click view keys and codes to reveal your new CD key. Then all you have to do is go to settings in Windows, click on update and security, click on activation, and finally click on change product key and paste your new key into the window and click next. You'll now have a fully licensed version of Windows 10 with no watermark. Check the links in the description to start saving now. All right, now this is where my method is going to probably differ from the other methods you've seen of swapping the Dell Optiplex small form factor because most people, yeah, they wanna try and take everything out of this system and then just transfer it into a brand new case. But what I've seen and what I've researched, there's a ton of different things that are proprietary in this model of Optiplex, the 9020 or the, the, the model that I have here that Dell basically, there's no adapters for it right now. Nobody makes the, uh, the certain adapters for this specific type of system. The mini towers, they make all sorts of adapters and uh, there's a video I've already made on that. If you guys wanna see it, click up there, I'll show it to you. But in this specific type of system, it's just, it's just a mess. So what I've decided is I went out and got myself a different motherboard that'll solve all of our problems. Now, this is a B85 motherboard, uh, it's LGA 1150, so it will work with our processor we have in here. And guys, this will solve every issue that we would have because this proprietary motherboard will not let us do basically anything we want, we wanna case swap it. So, we'll be able to use just our standard 24 pin ATX uh, uh, power supply right there. We won't have to use any kind of adapter. Uh, we, we still have four slots for our, our RAM right here. Um, and we have all the regular connections you'd find on a standard gaming motherboard and uh, more IO and everything like that too. So uh, I got this thing right here for like just over 50 bucks on eBay and I'll link it for you guys. And for me, it's worth it because it's gonna cause me a lot less headaches. So let's get started. So the first thing we had to do was go ahead and tear down the entire system. And now this is a lot easier than you guys may think because we really only needed a couple of things which are the hard drive, the RAM, and the CPU. And of course our CPU had a bunch of old thermal compound on it. So we went ahead and cleaned that off and pulled it out of the system. And from there we had the three components that we're gonna be taking over to our new case to swap it. And now some of you may be questioning this and thinking, why are you gonna waste all these different parts? And really, like I said in the beginning, it's because of how much of a pain in the butt it is to get around the proprietary parts in this motherboard. So you guys are gonna see that this will go a lot easier than if I was to take this motherboard and actually try to swap it into the new case. So with that, the parts that are left over, you can basically try to repurpose them or just chuck them in the bin. And with our parts that we're gonna use out of the old chassis, we can go ahead and take our i5-4690 and install it in our new B85 motherboard from Asus. And after that, we just go ahead and take our 16 gigabytes of DDR3 RAM and install them as we normally would with any other gaming motherboard. And then of course, we need to install some new thermal compound so we can then go ahead and fully install our new CPU cooler that we got off of eBay for just around $12. So it was a really great value and it will add some really cool RGB to our build. And with all that done, we now have our main components ready to go into our brand new case. And we're gonna put it in this Antec case right here. I don't know what model it is, I'll link it down below, but I got it off Amazon or Newegg forever ago and it's just been sitting around 
Um, has USB 3 and it has a tempered glass window. It has an RGB fan, so we're going to go ahead and use this and see what we can do with it. And our first step in the build is installing our IO shield because our awesome motherboard that we got off eBay actually came with one. And from there, I decided to open up the case, check the standoff placement, and go ahead and place our new motherboard inside the case. So as you can see, it's a little bit small, but I think it'll work nonetheless. We're going to, of course, put an actual, you know, uh, bigger power supply in. You don't really need it, but I'm going to actually add another graphic card I'll show you that in a minute uh, but we're gonna we're gonna just utilize this because we can so we're gonna be using the thermal take smart 500 watt power supply now it's nothing special but it's really cheap on Amazon and it will get the job done for what we're gonna be doing today and then for that graphics card I told you guys about we're actually going to be going ahead and putting in a full-size GTX 970 because I got one for cheap on the used market and uh, it works because we have this different motherboard and it can actually fit now without any riser cables or any kind of weird fan dangling. So now that we have all of our parts figured out, this was basically just a very standard computer build, starting with installing the power supply. Next, I added another case fan to go ahead and give the case a little more ventilation since it only came with one rear exhaust fan. And after that, I began wiring up everything in the case and it all was perfectly standard, including the CPU power and the big main 24 pin power. No weird adapters needed. It was all very easy. With this configuration, you're also able to take advantage of front USB 3, front panel audio and front USB 2 and all front IO connectors connected perfectly like your power button, your reset button and everything else that you use on your case. And after everything went so smoothly, it was just a matter of installing our EVGA GTX 970 to add a little bit more graphics power to this build. And the only thing left to do after that was to turn it on and see if it all works. Look at that. And this is what you like to see, you guys. This is, this is exactly what you like to see here. Let me see if I get a little screen right here. We get a bio screen. Yep, we got an Asus BIOS flash screen. So guys, uh, we got some great RGB lighting here now. Even on the case, I'll show you guys real quick. This case actually has some really cool RGB lighting on the front now. So that was one of the reasons why I got this case. You can actually control it right here so I can change it. Um, and it even, it works with the, uh, what do you call it? The, the fan back here. So we can just basically make it like some RGB color, just, just like our new CPU cooler here. We can make a match and make them look a lot cooler so guys, we went from a dull, weird looking Optiplex once again to a really cool looking build. And now we've got ourselves a GTX 970. So literally everything is working, you guys. I'm getting video right here. I'm getting uh, all the USB ports work, uh, the audio works, LEDs work, everything. Graphics card obviously is working because we're getting a signal. So literally everything I got is working like a charm and I couldn't be more pleased because I uh, basically was doing nothing with that Optiplex before and now it's a cool little build like this. So, you know, you guys may not agree with uh, how much money I spent on certain things. You may not agree with the route that I went with buying the new motherboard and all that stuff. But guys, honestly, it was just 50 bucks for the motherboard, like 55, 56 or something like that on eBay. And I think it was worth it because the headache that I did not get while building this, uh, it was just so easy. It was just like building a regular computer. Um, so to not have that, to not have to splice any wires, not to do anything stupid like that, uh, it was more than worth it to me. So, you know, you guys tell me your opinions down in the comments below, and that's really gonna be it. I finally case swapped the Dell Optiplex small form factor, so you guys can stop asking about it. It is possible, you can do it. Uh, it just may take a few more steps than you originally expected, but that's usually how these case swaps go. So, you guys know what to do. Like the video if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel if you wanna see more cool stuff like this, because I got a lot more coming in the future, and I'll see you guys in the next video.